We're here in Tom Musselman's last studio. He started working here in the mid-90s, here in Cooper Square, not far from where Tom went to school at the Cooper Union. This drawing right here, I made a little copy of, and this is what I'm going to be basing my still life on today. In the studio we have still life number 35, which is uh, one of the early large-scale collage works that Tom did in the early 60s. What he wanted to do was make painting on the same scale as billboard images. We wrote to companies to get these billboards to use that as a material. So instead of having a, a loaf of bread that might be four or five inches, now we could have an image of a loaf of bread that was like four or five feet. This is still life number 35 from 1963. I was still fairly early in painting, so this is mostly collage. And working at this scale, these are damn hard to make. To glue this stuff on the canvas this size was very hard, it was very tricky. Uh, I never chose images because I liked the product. I didn't drink Royal Crown Cola. I'd never heard of that bread, whatever it is, and Libby's stew, of course, I would not really look forward to eating. Collages have been around for hundreds of years, collages, but not at this scale. So this gave me a little something different, a little something new to work with in collage. Change the nature of collage a little bit. Tom was really one of the first to do still lives in this billboard idea, and no doubt he transformed the idea actually of billboards or movie images uh, on a screen onto painting, as uh, Rosenquist did, in a different way. But I think that what I saw then and still see today is a general freshness of the image and of the color and of the idea of the work. The fact that it's remained fresh and in many cases seems to have become more monumental than it seemed in the early days. This flower got a little bit big and it still is a little bit big. That's a big daffodil in relation to the apple, but I, I'm going to let myself get away with it now. Maybe that'll be a small change in my work. The best scene in the film is him sitting in front of the painting and talking about what he's doing. I mean, you do get a real, you get an amazing sense of who he was as a person. So much comes through in that short little clip. His sense of humor, his sort of seriousness about what he's doing. I decided I wanted to keep the feeling of a nude because of my interest in nudes. And I think there's not much else to say about this. It's pretty much self-explanatory. This green has become the leaf, but I think that's the area, the weakest area I've got to, I've got to still work on. I've got, I think I've got the flower on the right side, I've got the drape with the right impact, and I think basically the, the painting is more or less ready to start nailing down a little bit more. Some days he was maybe focused more on the sunset nudes and, more on, and others more on the abstracts. In terms of the sunset nudes, he would work on small studies, little tracing paper drawings, and he would work through multiple variations on the same um, composition until he found the one that he deemed it. Uh, this is, would be the beginning mylar. And from that I make a three-dimensional maquette. That was the one that he was going to kind of blow up in large scale was back in the day of slides. Well, the next step is I put the slide of this into the slide projector to see how big it wants to be and then he would figure out what sizes he was going to make larger paintings. So he would project the slide onto the wall and see what size it felt good at. He would say that an image would just feel right when it was the right size. So he would make it too big and it would just kind of blow apart and it just wasn't right. So he'd bring it back down a little bit. And then so he'd get the sizes for that and then he'd order a stretcher, you know, another week or two would come, the stretcher would come back and then he'd start that that painting. He loved working. He always said that his work was his play. And you felt it too. And uh, seeing him work in the studio, he couldn't be happier. He was just having a great time. He'd have his music on and he was just in his happy place and it was just, everything was good. Tom was living a incredibly rich interior life. And it was coming out all over the place. It was coming out in songs, it was coming out in paintings, it was coming out on works on paper. I realized after I got to know him a little bit that he was 
he was living a, an incredible fantasy inside there. I met Tom in 1989. I had moved up from Baltimore and was looking for a job as a studio assistant. And I got a call from Tom one day saying, why don't you come into the studio? Let's sort of see how it goes. And here I am, many years later, still working in the studio, working with the family. I started working for my dad in 2002 in the studio, and I became his paint mixer. He had a very dry sense of humor, but he would uh, order up his paint in strange amounts, like um, I'll take a fingernail of cobalt blue or a, uh, a skosh of cad red. <laughs> The progression of my whole history with Tom started with meeting him at Sydney Janis Gallery, becoming the portrait model, becoming the nude model, then becoming the studio assistant slash country singer. I would lay on one of these tables and he placed his paper on this board so he was super close to me. Those sessions were very intense. There were three hours in the morning, four hours in the afternoon, and he drew and drew and drew and drew and drew. So these sessions produced a lot of drawings and then he worked from those drawings. On Monday we were married 35 years. So I've known him for quite a long time, in fact, ever since we were students at Cooper Union. He was madly in love yeah. with you for your whole time together. There was, yeah. They were the great love story. Yeah. He, he wanted to paint you and draw yeah. you. Yeah. So we've been very sensitive to trying to preserve a legacy and preserve a sense that an artist worked here. It's not a gallery. We do change and move things, but we want to keep some sense that art was created here. Ty came to the studio often and always had an interesting visit. Uh, he always had new work. I said it was always a, a pleasure to visit. And it's still a, a pleasure to come down and see his things after all these years. And, and now that he isn't here, there's, the family is maintaining his things lovingly. I think our job really is to sort of continue to bring new people to Tom's work. And fortunately, he left enough archival material, enough writings, enough information in the work itself that we can actually sort of figure out what his intention was. New generations come along, and there really is something substantial there for people to, to discover. In all the years that I've been working with Tom's paintings, I learn new things constantly.